To adopt a fish and give it a good home, you will need to replicate its natural environment. As other animals on Earth, and even humans, each fish has a particular environmental need for their body chemistry to remain stable and healthy. A few basics you will need to keep your betta fish happy. A heater. These fish are used to warm weather and water, so they need to be in between 73 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. A thermometer. Do daily checks on your fish to see its temperature. You never want it to get too cold or too hot for them. A fish tank with a filter system to help establish good bacteria and keep the water filtered. This will help you not have to do water changes as much as you would without a filtering system. Beta food. Different types of fish pellets or other special treats and cleaning system, cleaning the substrate or gravel and also to take out the dirty water for water changes. You will also need an algae scraper, even. You will also need decorations. Betas are curious explorers and like things to swim around and hide in. They are used to navigating through plants in a rice paddy and living in a dense filled environment of small rocks, leaves, water, flowers, aquatic plants, and soil. And the last thing I would recommend is water testing strips or a water testing kit so that you can always test the water chemistry and make sure that it is a healthy environment for your fish. Knowing this, you can do further research into where any fish comes from to recreate its environment at home. In particular, the betta fish grows up in the wild, native to areas like Cambodia and Thailand, inhabiting rice paddies and still watered canals. This means they do not like a lot of moving water to push their delicate fins around. Most of the wild betta fish that you would be able to catch in the rice paddies do not have the different types of tails that you see in the pet stores. Those have been actually created through many years of breeding to get those particular fins and structures. But still, betta fish, even in the wild, do not like a lot of flow to the water and prefer more of a standstill type of environment without a lot of current. Also, it's important to know that while bettas are sold in little jars and often they are seen in small glass bowls, they live in shallow but wide water holes that is filled with live plants and places to hide and breed in. It's best to allow your single betta the freedom to swim in a tank that is no less than 2.5 gallons. This one here is 3 gallons that I have called the top fin betta flow betta aquarium from PetSmart. I really like this one particular tank as it has a nice soft gentle flow and it contains the filter on the inside and it gives my fish still a nice place to swim being more wide than tall. Also the LED lights are great and they also help to provide light for my plants. Speaking about plants, betta fish love plants because it gives them something to hide in and swim around in. It gives them a place to stay when they feel stressed and even sleep in. Some of them like to sleep on the leaves and it helps to mimic their natural environment too. So I make sure that my betta has plenty of live plants that it normally would see in its environment, such as java fern, wisteria, Anubis nanan, and Caris, and Amazon Zord plant. Another thing I recommend is called the almond leaf, and you can buy a pack of them anywhere online. And they are really wonderful to have in your tank because they provide special types of nutrients that your betta fish needs. And betta breeders have said that they have used them for years. Helps to prevent a disease called fin rot. Helps to keep their colors uh, bright because they have all the healthy nutrients um, in their diet and in their water ecosystem. And these leaves provide a very natural environment for your tank. They love to sleep on them or hide in them 
uh, swim underneath them and they do release tannins so it will turn your tank water a little bit brown but that's only more of a natural environment because that's what the rice paddies look like. You can also use a type of plant called frogbit which is a type of small lily pad that sits on the surface of the tank. Just make sure that you don't cover too much of the surface area because that will take away its um, oxygen and will not allow it to go up to the surface to um, get a quick breath of fresh air. So just have a few little lily pads in there to give your beta the natural environment that it is used to. I also like to use moss balls as well as an added benefit. My tank has three types of plants, wisteria in the front for cover, java fern in the back, and the tall Amazon sword plant. Non-toxic and soft silk fake plants are alright, however you won't get the added benefit of live plants. The plants help to give more oxygen to your fish, since bettas need to breathe air as labyrinth breathers. They will still come up to the surface to catch a quick breath of air. The more oxygen in the tank, it helps them not have to struggle for breath. The live plants survive fine as long as your tank has an LED light on the hood. These plants will grow. The goal of decorating can be many things to provide shelter to sleep, cover from stress, and a place to breed. Instinctually, although you adopting your betta from a breeder or a pet store came from a loving place to give it a good home, they still are instinctual creatures and will ultimately follow their same instinctual pattern of behavior as they do in the wild. They hide from enemies or predators, they take cover and shelter while sleeping, and they also find a safe place to breed. If you can provide them these things, then your betta will feel safe in its environment and less stressed which causes sickness and disease. Make sure any decorations you use are non-toxic and soak well before they go into the tank to ensure no factory residue is left on them. After the plants, it is important to figure out how to decorate to mimic its environment as a rice paddy. I decided to add a little bit of a rocky shelter to sleep bridge and a little fountain to provide an interesting layout. I decided to go with a Lothlorien forest theme to give Ulmo the bluefish a cozy new home. He is a butterfly half moon tail male beta and I named him Ulmo after the valor of water in the Silmarillion by J.R.R. Tolkien. Ulmo has a heater which is automatic and adjusts to room temperature. Sometimes these heaters can be dangerous but I watch it carefully and turn it on and off depending what the weather is like outside and inside my house. If you feel you want a more consistent heating system, you can buy one with a dial that you can set. I feed him twice a day with a variety of diet. Betta fish are carnivores, so they eat little bugs that fall or land into the rice paddies on the surface of the water. I often give him a dried worm or other treat a day and then two dried pellets at night to keep his diet varied as it would be in the wild. Betta fish are generally independent as they are known to fight one another and have been bred for these purposes. You never want to keep two bettas in the same tank for this reason. They will fight and eventually may kill one another due to territorial behavior. Sometimes you can keep an all-female betta fish tank called a sorority tank but only in a larger gallon tank, about 20 gallons or more, with plenty of hiding places for the stress that these fish may feel at times and a need for their own private space and territory. Trying to breed a male and female betta fish will take some extra time and care and must be done carefully or they too can fight and hurt one another. So if interested in breeding betta fish, please do further research on this. Once you set up your tank properly with the right size, decorations, and plants to mimic its natural environment, you will want to make sure to keep the water chemistry just right for your betta. Adding tap water needs to be conditioned right with water conditioners before adding your betta fish in. Keeping fish healthy is really knowing about water's chemistry. The best pH is neutral between basic and acidic at 7.0. But freshwater betta fish can survive in 6.5 through 7.5 well. 
You also want to make sure the nitrates, KH, or carbonate hardness, or the GH, which is the general hardness, is at the right levels. And for this, a water testing kit is recommended. I love using these test strips as they are quick and easy to use and read with the chart that they come with as well. After every water change, you will need to put back the water close as possible to the way that you took it out. So make sure it is the same temperature you take out, then put back in. It is helpful to do about 30% water changes at a time to not take out too much good bacteria if it is already established in the tank. Remember, your tank is its own little ecosystem with microscopic bacteria that can be healthy as well as harmful. Make sure the water temperatures and water chemistry is at the right levels for a beta, and it will keep the harmful bacteria down and keep the helpful bacteria circulated within your ecosystem. One thing about tank lights, rice paddies are generally murky pools with bits of sunlight. The betta fish sleeps at night and are typically more active during the day. Plants also convert the CO2 into fresh oxygen during the day with the sunlight. So I keep the LED lights, which mimic the sun, on during the day and switch them off at night for Ulmo to sleep. One way you can tell your betta is healthy and happy is their behavior. Males, and sometimes females even, may start to blow bubbles at the surface, which means they are making bubble nests to hold eggs. So do not worry if you see this behavior. It's completely natural and it's a good sign. It means they are feeling safe and happy enough in their environment for them to one day breed. Bettas usually are swimming around, dancing delicately with their fins, and a nice balance between swimming along as well as going to the surface for air is perfectly normal behavior for your betta. Your betta fish is more aware than other wild fish as they have been bred into human captivity for many years now. So make sure you say hello to your fish daily or a few times. Let him or her get to know your face as it comes up to greet you. These little fish have great personalities. Give your betta fish a good home so that it feels comfortable in and safe and something interesting to explore every day. And your betta fish will stay happy and healthy for many years. Personally, I do hope that one day we stop breeding the betta fish to fight one another and we get rid of that sport. But until then, when you see a betta fish sitting in a little cup in PetSmart, maybe think about giving it a nice new home, a bigger one, since already it is in captivity. We are the shepherds on this earth, and as guardians, we must always be aware of the discomfort of our fellow beings who share this world. <laughs>